we're not as low as people think now. Like just because we got stomped by C9, we know what happened, and like they snowballed early game. So sure, it looks really bad, but in the game, we knew it was happening, and we just have to come in with a better game plan. You just have to kind of like look at the previous comps, look at what we did wrong, and just try to like learn from it, and not necessarily feel bad about getting stomped. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of the North American LCS taking place this week at Seattle's PAX Prime. Now, Curse, they take a one-game lead and have looked to gotten their confidence back. But probably, when we talk about Curse, we don't normally look at Cop as the as the playmaker. So talk to me a little bit about your experience against him as a player and how he's developed. Yeah, so Cop was always characterized as a pretty passive player. Like, even if you look on Reddit, I know it's not the best tool to decide how a player is but yeah he's always just been a really passive player but within the last like month or so i've noticed he's flashing in lane he's flashing to get to team fights and it's actually paying dividends for them like they're able to play off of cops aggression cops newfound aggression and it i don't know it's making the team fights for them i think pretty solid and pretty quick yeah and the last time he had 14 kills where he just tied his career high was 15 months ago yeah so quite a while back but having that extra threat on the team like you said, probably could yield dividends for them in this series, buy them that ticket to Worlds. But over on the side of LMQ, we've got to ask ourselves, how are they going to get back into this series? I think a lot of it is communication, and a lot of that relies on no name. Because Vasily, he was way too far forward. You need people to just funnel communication through, and that is the shot caller of the team is no name in the jungle. He had a great Lee Sin game. He set up the fights correctly with his kicks, multiple times sending people soaring through and getting the maximum damage from it and, dis and displacement. But I think that it's the shot calling. His gameplay is not called into question here. He had a great game, but it is, is the calls. They picked fights that they shouldn't have picked over and over and over again. And it was really kind of distressing to watch that happen because they had a lead for a large portion of that game in the mid game because it went back and forth, but then they basically they threw it. They picked fights they shouldn't have picked. I sound like a broken record right now because it's just something where it's just like that was clearly what was wrong there. All right, well, we'll see if they can get back to that kind of collective mindset that we're used to seeing them operate under as we hand it over to Freak and Kobe to get us into the game. Thank you very much, guys. So we've got another great game in front of us here. Best of five, winner goes to Worlds. You can't say it enough because it's really what's on the line here. Curse 1-0 off of uh, a really hectic game. And to me, I have to question LMQ a little bit because they had the ability to sort of win the game and the comp didn't support closing it out. Baron, turret sieges, but couldn't actually push the lead any farther. Well, definitely the misstep around the red side of Curse you can't argue with that. That was yeah. a, a huge mistake there. But this is going to be really, really big boon for Curse. Uh, you can tell both of these teams are playing with their hearts. Constant fighting, not necessarily the best laid plans, mm -hmm. uh, but it is a very, very exciting here. Yeah, it's going to be a whole bunch of fun in this series. And so I have to see then what the adaptations end up being. Because I don't think either team needs to necessarily change their plan heavily in the next game because they're both able to gain leads. They both kind of lost advantages in silly ways, ones they think you could fix overall? I, I think they definitely need to change uh, that last pick for okay. LMQ, going for picks instead of uh, giving away that Yasuo to Voiboy. That was huge. Giving Voiboy that Yasuo, that very comfortable champion, mm -hmm. you can really tell that it helped them out so much. So yeah. that was a really big strength for Curse. Well, we'll see what the adaptations end up being here to get ourselves into the champion select. Like Alistair still goes away from Ackerman. Want to see what other adaptations are made. Zillion still removed from especially, even though Moore plays the champion himself. The Trist still away from Basili, so Curse not wanting to maybe first pick that for Voy or anything. They just don't want to give him that champion. Now, a new pick does come through as LMQ removes the Syndra from Voy Boy. So once again, even though Curse are first pick, they ban out the Tristana. Not going to uh, first pick that one away. Not willing to blow uh, a first pick on that, even though it is a flex pick for them. So that is going to leave up, once again, the Yasuo, as well as many options for top lane that we haven't seen up before. Uh, both Alistair and Maokai are available. Yeah, the big one is the Nunu that finally comes through for the first time in five games for Curse, and they first pick it right off the bat. All right, that's been a huge pick for Dominate in the past. He's been one of the early adopters of the Max Consume strategy with Nunu, and he does a great job of controlling the vision and objectives very early on in the game. See if he's able to get off to a good start this time around. It does leave up Maokai, though, for Ackerman, and maybe they'll steal away Lulu on top of that one. Those are two good friends of Yasuo. 
And yes, it's going to be the grab here. So is that support Lulu? Or is that jungle Malkai? Or is that mid Lulu? Very, very flexible pick for them. Uh, probably will be top lane Malkai and support Lulu, I'm thinking. Xiao Xiao has played the champion, but I expect them to put him in more of a carry position. Mm -hmm. uh, he They funnel so much money into him. It It's almost... Uh, a travesty if we don't get to see him on one of those carry champions. Also keep in mind, now there's five champions removed from Quas' potential champion pool. Plays Lulu almost all the time, that gets taken away, the Nidalee banned out, Alistair and Maokai stolen away. I'm really wondering about uh, mid lane though, because that Yasuo, Ryze is banned out, uh, LMQ already have great setup for him, mm -hmm. and as we said, it was such a big champion for Voiboy. Yeah, I think it's a smart choice here. You grab it away. You know LMQ would grab that second round. Yeah. Cop again does get his Corky. Now, this is going to be interesting. He did go 14-2 or something like that last game here. And he's even got a Blood Bowl to make his auto attacks even better over time. I think the best part is the Valkyrie over the Dragon Wall into the pit for a kill and then flash back up to keep on yeah. securing more kills. Also, it does a lot for a curse for their mid game. They do a really good job of pushing a lot of these fights in the mid game. Corky really shines there, and since this has been such a bloody matchup between these two teams, constantly fighting, mm -hmm. I really like the pickup for one of the early and mid game AD carries here. Looks like Vasily will do the same though. Uh, yeah, Vasily is going to lock in Lucian here for himself as Kha'Zix goes into the jungle for no name. We have, for what it's worth, seen Shao Shao play that champion. I know Kha'Zix is 99% of the time a jungler here, but. When it's been played earlier this year, I can't always call uh, count uh -huh. it out, really. Uh-huh. An option there. We'll see what Shao Shao decides to go with. Um, versus Yasuo, though, probably not going to be Kha'Zix. Uh, it is definitely a good combo with Lulu, though. Anytime you have Kha'Zix, ever since the ult was changed for Kha'Zix, mm -hmm. he, he doesn't really like to even build defenses anymore, commit himself fully to the assassin play style. So anytime you can have some backup with shielding and with the ult from Lulu definitely helps him out a lot as well. A dive partner with Maokai, always definitely going to be a boon. I also really like Maokai against Yasuo. Yasuo's biggest strength is his mobility, jumping in and out of teamfights, uh, walking around. And Maokai being able to lock him down and peel him yeah. is really huge for LMQ. I agree. I think Akram is going to be a big part of this team. And he's up against a Dr. Mundo who's going to have a license to scale from Quas here. And it is Zed now locked in for Xiao Wei Xiao in the mid lane. We've seen this battle before, actually, and it went High's way back in game one against uh, Team Curse. We're going to see what changes up now as LMQ needs to get some wins on the board in this BO5 for Worlds against Curse. Yeah, the, the assassin duel between Zed and Yasuo is so exciting to watch. You see it a lot so many times here, especially in that Challenger series. You saw it a couple of times as well. I'm very interested to see what summer spells they'll be sticking with. It looks like Xiao Xiao will be sticking to that Ignite. There is a Mundo on the other team, and there is that always that option where they might need Zed to split push against Mundo. Yeah. So having that in your pocket would definitely be helpful. But once again, Curse with two exhausts. It just gives you so much power in the team fights when you have the ability to completely negate a champion for the duration of an exhaust summoner spell. I mean, ha if you have both of those up, it's very easy for you to yeah. swing those team fights in your favor. You drop their overall damage up by 40%, you drop their attack speed by about a third, and they even lose some armor and MR. We'll see if they can keep their coordination up for those spells. Guys, if you want to change your vote after game one or double down, tweet at level Esports, use the hashtag CRSWIN or at, uh, hashtag LMQWIN to let us know who you think is going to win here. Looks like the Twitter vote was right last I checked. Curse did win game one, but can always change that up. The initial vote was for LMQ, and then yeah. everybody changed. Right, the Twitter <laughs> vote, yeah. So it just depends who uses what. But coming into this one, I actually got to say I like LMQ's comp a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Because even though their sieging itself did improve, I think Lucian's better than Twitch at that, they have a really easy fallback pattern as well of Xiao Wei Xiao just being the split push god on Zed. And so there's... To me, I feel like LMQ are going to, again, get this sort of early mid-game lead. They tend to do so. Then actually have the way of closing it out. And Curse are putting a lot of weight on Voidboy and Cop's shoulders. Going to rely on them for all of their damage here. Locking in the Nunu plus Mundo combo. It is a great beefy front line with a lot of HP. But uh, that definitely means that we will need to continue to see Cop's uh, forward thinking play style. That's true. And he might actually be in a little bit more of a contested lane. I don't 
necessarily expect LMQ to lane swap for any Welcome lane matchup reason. Rift. They might do it for strategic ones. And yeah, both of these AD carries very confident in their lane phase. Well, actually, I can already tell you Expecial doesn't want to lane swap. He opened door and shield for himself. One of very few players I see actually open that kind of a build. A lot of music. You can call that oh, music, I guess, from uh, from Lucian. Shaking his guns like maracas. Mm -hmm. Well, Boy Boy was playing his loot recorder. Standard uh, late trinket wards drop from both sides. No invades in the making. New, new, though. Let's see what kind of early action Dominate wants to get up. He did start with the three-minute ward. Looks like he'll probably start blue side and make his way down bottom. And we're going to have normal lanes here. So, going to see Curse in a two-on-two. -two, a, uh, I guess a quote-unquote regular two-on-two -two for the first time in about a week. Let's see here what Dominate does go with. Because if you see that trinket ward go down, knowing the expiration date on it, he can try and go for a sneaky uh, second buff contest with Nunu. As long as you're well-timed and your addition is on point, then you can steal away any buff that you want. Right now, the normal stuff going on to, very, to start this game out. Dominate, consume, and smite. Pretty easy grab. No name. Gonna grab the blue for himself as well. And we are now into the lane. So, cop. Bop and bump. And they're going to try to push for level 2 first. Looks like the faster pushing is right now for Curse, though. LMQ will have to back off pretty soon. Oh, the play already, though. Getting some damage on the more. Good little trade there. Advantage Curse down bottom. And it looks like there will be no sneaky blue buff to red buff invade from Dominate. Does go over to his Wolves for a normal clear path on Nunu. Oh, what a juke. Nice open up there. Shao Shao does answer back, though, both at half health and chugging one of the health potions, though. Shao Shao does have two more to the Doran's Light of Void Boy. I actually feel like aggressive trades like this go Shao Shao's way because he can potion more. We'll have to see. He's definitely playing back with Zed, trying to... Uh, CS with his shuriken. Uh, what I want to talk about up top, though, Ackerman just placed his top ward, and they should probably have called that it was a blue buff start from Nunu, but it looks like LMQ looking to make some moves early again, as we saw last game. Very important to tilt this mid lane in your favor. This time around, too, especially it being Zed Yasuo a matchup. Boy, boy going in for the trade, the dash back through Minion, but suddenly he's got to be very careful. Ignite is already burned on, and Shao Wei Shao wants it, so Flash engage. They get the slow, the Flash in for Shao Wei Shao. There's the kill picked up. First blood to no name. And Boy Boy burns his exhaust summoner, thinking that maybe Dominate can get there to clean up, but a little bit too late. LMQ rewarded for their initiative. Boy Boy once again going down first blood. Oh, the hook hits Vasily, though. The shield's not going to do too much. Good answer there by Curse. Half HP for Vasily. Cop doing a great job once again, trying to bully in his lane. Gets a good foothold for Curse down on the bottom side of the map. Vasily answers, and he gets to use the trade for a, uh, the shield for a 100% favorable trade there. And also keep in mind, Vasily hasn't used his potion yet, whereas Cop has. So even though you see these health bars, just now he pops the potion, though, it's going to actually be a health lead for LMQ. Again, Harass goes in. Good dodge in the hook. 4 CS lead for Comp, but much more health on LMQ right now. And the lane coming back to middle means that it's going to have to be some more defensive play from Curse. Actually, they're even just making the full call to recall here for Cop. Doesn't want to stick around for the cannon minion wave. Boy Boy shoving lane and then going to farm race to make the best of his situation. Although he did go down to that gank, Boy Boy was performing very well in lane. Got that CS lead over Zed. The drawback that does come with playing aggressively, though. And when you're up front in your lane and you're getting that harass down and you're trying to bully and make your opponent miss CS, mm -hmm. it's always the threat of the junglers that even out lanes that are going one way. Okay, let's see here. No name gank number two. Well, Quas is used to getting camped in that top lane. And he does a good job of not giving away his intel. He's got vision, but he continues to play exactly the same.
standing in the in the lane here. He's he's wasting so much of no name's time. This is something Quas does very very well. He waits so long though. No name finally gets suspicious and sweeps out the ward. Actually timed out. I think he even got the kill on the ward itself. Oh wow! Didn't even get the ten gold. Sweeped anyway. And the thing is, Quas is already forced to respect Ackerman. You're seeing he's down ten minions so far in this lane and losing a lot of health. So Quas basically forced to wait until he can afford. I think a Spectre's cowl for his first recall. No name, I believe, just jumped into that bush. So he was not seen by that ward. Pinks go, or pinks go down, though. They saw the ward he placed over the wall. Oh, wow. So they know he's nearby regardless. Good attention and uh, awareness here by Curse. Boy, boy. Oh, he goes, goes in anyway. Battle, but no name is around. He's got to be careful. There's the slow. No more minions to jump to. No TP. No uh, flash. Sorry, available. No name. They're taking the counterattack. Dominate wants this one. Boy, boy gets the kill. Shao Wei. Shao pops the death park. But nothing else to do for that one. Great counter gank what? by Dominate. A masterful play by Boy Boy. They pinged down that ward. They saw that ward placed. He had an inkling that no name was there. And he goes in with his ultimate, knowing that he'll get a full shield after his ultimate. And he leaves two minions to jump back to. So that in case no name is there, he yeah. could run back to Dominate. It was just such a beautiful, beautiful job there by Boy Boy. Baiting in No Name, drawing out that gank, getting his vengeance on the LMQ jungler. Beautiful stuff then, and Curse pulls it right back to a 200 gold game in this one. Watch the bot lane again, his special did not try to go for a dragon with his team off of that enemy jungler kill. No Name now level 5 trying to catch back up, but he is going to have to take both these buffs before he hits level 6. Yeah, it looks like they will probably hit level 6 around the same time here. Definitely much more crucial for Kha'Zix. But as you can see, the focus for Nunu is in a completely different area. He's got the early Quill Coat. He's got extra wards on top of it. After this, he makes his venture to try and establish that early ring of vision, the very important early ring that makes it safer for you to get deep vision. Right now, they do uh, need some more work up on that top side. LMQ's got their defensive pink ward line. Um, and pretty much Ackerman is very safe in this top lane to continue pressuring Quas. He's got uh, plenty of vision around him to support an aggressive playstyle. Yeah, masterfully done so far by LMQ. And No Name goes for the max W, evolves wings on Kha'Zix. Like to keep those updates going. Yeah, I definitely am a fan of that style. Very, very aggressive style to go for more ganks that would otherwise not be possible for you. Dominate comes to defend his pink ward, though. And that's going to be successful. Not oh, got him! Way. Now, boy goes in. Exhaust burn, and so is the Ice Blast. It's special in the mix of... Whoa! Catches more. This is not good for LMQ. Another knockup is found. Here comes Ackman, though. Flashing away is more special. Pulls him back in, and Dominate grabs the Lantern. They're not going to get the support kill as Ackman now forced to run away. 300 health. Clear is going to land. Second kill for Boy Boy here. And LMQ taking a very bad fight. I think that pink ward in the back of the red bush is Voiboys too. And that's the reason that you place your early pink wards on defensive spots on your side of the map. Because then you can defend them. You can often bait in ganks like this. And man, Curse out to a very, very good start here. Off the back of this mid lane, even though there was a hiccup early, they come back extremely strong. Boy Boy rushes into this one, hits a beautiful Q, chains it into the ultimate, and then that's the power of the exhaust spell. Also helps them in chases, mm -hmm. enables Dominate to get into range to further add his slowdown, and the great collapse from Curse's bottom lane, everybody coming together to defend that one pink ward. There it is, the Q into ultimate, Dominate gets into range, and there's nowhere for Xiao Xiao to go. Even though he gets onto X Special, X Special also hooks in more, goes right through under Xiao Xiao, I guess, and they're able to get another one off this. Teleport both used by both of them. As you know, they also get Dragon on top of this. Mm -hmm. So remember, in the game, first game there, Curse versus Cloud9. Cloud9 get the triple kill, and they get the first Dragon. Similar situation here for Curse. It wasn't the first blood money, but they get a huge um, bonus down by the Dragon Pit. The kill and the Dragon, we'll see how well they can use it and how well they can chain it into the mid game. I just really like the adaptations as well by Curse in this game. Look at Void Boy's build, double Doran's Blade Ninja Tabby. He's like, I want to make sure that I can handle Shao Wei Shao in this 1v1. Mm -hmm. I do not want to die to the physical damage here. 
Well, they are really facing power spike. Look at the team that they are facing. Well, sure, I mean, it's a cause of illusion as well. I mean, these are all just very smart choices to sort of start more defensively, make sure plays can't be made, and just make the right choice of the team. Yeah, interesting choice from him because we often see, of course, Berserker Greaves because he scales so well with attack speed. Um, but yeah, having the presence of mind to go for Kabi, playing a bit more defensively. No name once again. Camping around mid lane, as we've seen so often. Dominate does come in. Red ping goes down, though. Let's see what Voidboy goes for next. How much of his static shift can he make? Cancels recall. Never mind. We'll, we'll wait longer. Maybe he wants to stack up the entire static shift before he goes back to buy. That's always a huge, huge burst in power. If he can wait all the way till the full item. Yeah. and not have to just come back with the pieces, the zeal. He's about 400 gold short right now, so it's this Wraith camp in two to three minion waves. You'll see him by 13 minutes have that item. Also, he's got red buffs, so anytime you do have one of these buffs, this early in the game as a mid laner, you don't want to waste time with it going back to base and purchasing. So he wants to stay there as long as possible. He's going to try and wait it out for that full static shiv. Dominate once again, protecting his wards, forces Shao Shao off and away from his minion line. I mean, just look at how good those wards are, though. Dominate just completely crushed that top jungle with a, with his uh, sight stone. And we're about to see the importance of those wards once again. Even though No Name's got a pink in here and he feels confident camping, Voiboy had that ward above the wall to see him before he even jumped into this position. Mm -hmm. So Voiboy can once again use this intelligence over No Name, the extra information that he has, trying to make No Name waste as much time as possible. That's why we're seeing all these different weird spots for wards around mid lane. People yeah. just trying to find odd places to put them to see before you get into position. And it's so far been pretty darn good for Curse here. We've seen one good first blood by No Name, but otherwise not getting his way in the map at all. Another blue buff goes over to the Kha'Zix. He's trying to farm up, but still a great game so far by Curse. They are holding on despite a couple of rough lanes. Uh, Dragon and plus two kills would normally be worth more than a thousand gold lead. But that top lane has been really good for Ackerman. Yeah, LMQ. Let's talk about the things that they are doing well. Ackerman top lane already has his stacking rod of ages. Very good position for him, and he will bring a very big presence to the mid-game team fight for the next dragon if LMQ decide to fight it. Shao Shao stopped at the Cutlass and went towards Brutalizer, it looks like. So I think he's going to try and finish Brutalizer here. Yeah, it's a typical build. You get the Cutlass for the CC to guarantee you can chase, but you go for your Armor Fen core afterwards. It's a lot like some of the sort of Kha'Zix and Nocturne builds where you like kind of finish your like first sort of core item like a Madrid or something. Mm -hmm. And you get all the armor pin in there. So Dominate. Talk about other things that's dominated well inside the red buff though right now he's currently counter jungling and he does have the extra ward here. No name. Blind jumps in. Goes for the battle there. Level nine on both these guys and then it will take an entire absolute zero. Tries to get away. Dominate though just walks away cleanly. Laners both collapsing at the same time. Good reaction there. Curse do come away with another steal. Red buff steal for them. What can LMQ do to get back in this game? The time will be working against LMQ because they have so much attack damage. Uh, some early armor from Curse would go a long way. Oh, the hook lands on the Vasily, the play as well. Half health on the Lucian. Out it goes, taking a rocket for his troubles. He is up in CS here, uh, Vasily, even though whenever we do pan down, it is the Curse team that have shoved up into the lane and landing hooks. We're also seeing a different build come out of him. I normally see the Brutalizer finish before the Infinity Edge on Lucians. Uh -huh. I wonder if he even will go for the cooldown build. Well, Infinity Edge completed is definitely a big power boost sure. for him. He can land a few crits here. Dominate's also hanging around this bottom side, so just trying to add some extra pressure down there in support of this dragon that's about, about to spawn. They get a, a pretty deep uh, line of wards here. LMQ collapse. Both top laners have teleports. Dragon's been started. Looks like it's going to be maybe an attempted stop here. TP is coming for Ackerman. And Curse runs right the heck away. Quas already recalled, though. 
Do they just give it up though? They have Nunu. They can flash in and try and steal this one. Flash and Smite available for Dominate. Is he gonna try? He flashes in. No, red team gets the dragon and Dominate's gonna die first. Battle has begun now to 4v5. Floss is there. Knocked around. Ackman's still on the front line protecting his team. Shao Wei Shao forced to flash away. That is Quas on the chase. He will claim that kill. Now we watch the rest of this battle though. It is more who tanks and exhausts. Probably not the ideal target. Then Vasily takes one but still kills X special through the exhaust. Quas still taking in the front lines. So far, Kurt oh! four people in Kavnodane resets out. He found one. They might get caught. Vasily's trying to take down Quas now. The Infinity Edge crits dealing plenty of damage now. Trying to chase on in. Does not land the slow for Ackerman. And Curse, yeah, be careful. Oh, Ackerman! Does not Ooh. get chopped down. And out goes Vasily. Ackerman came into that fight and he stopped Dominate in his tracks. Dominate was able to get the flash over the wall in range of smite, but he couldn't get close enough to consume it. Ackerman immediately, twisted advance, stops him right there, and the dragon secured. All right, well, beautiful things then. LMQ putting themselves in the lead now, 1,000 gold up. Let's take a look at it one more time. Dominate tries to get in there, but just barely out of range to uh, try and consume that dragon. And then the collapse. Both top laners teleported in. Xiao Xiao does get cornered off here by Quas and Kopf and eventually goes down. But Curse have to uh, refocus their damage here. X Special does go down, giving the opportunity for No Name to jump over this wall here. There's a ward on him, but he's got Flash. There it is. The Flash jumped in and he's evolved his wings so he can jump out for the reset. Very, very crucial Flash there from Kopf to get away and they do not end up taking down Quas. But it was still a battle that LMQ would love to have. And oh yeah, that pushed great. them back up into the lead. Oh yeah, absolutely. They're doing wonderfully here. And also, I just want to point out uh, the Vasily item progression, because it's interesting to me. He's going towards maybe just the Ayad Shiv, just standard AD carry type build. It could still be a Yomus. Yeah. It could still be cooldown boots, but the item progression tells me it's not. That also means he's going to spike above Kopp fairly soon. The Triforce being done does give Curse a bit of a power spike. They take down the mid out of turret, and they bring back the gold lead. Yeah, Triforce plus Static Shiv for Boy Boy. So they have two of their crucial offensive items. Look at this swing up to top here for Curse. Quas is getting some good damage on Ackerman to weaken him for this dive. And it looks like they are going to collapse. Ex Special gets the lantern off in time. They've got him cornered. Ackerman is completely surrounded. Puts the root into his dominant. It gets pushed around, though. That'll be a clean kill. Nicely picked up. Quas gets the credit for it. LMQ have converged as well, though. Who can they get on the exit? A slow on Ex Special. He dodged the hook. The flay is not going to matter. Vasily gets one back. Boy, boy, is the new challenger, though. Red buff does charge up. A lot of damage. Windwall comes in, but there's still some damage from No Name. Boy Boy, one hit from dead. No Name resets, but not in time. Dominate gets the kill. Now Kopp, he's gonna fall, and Xiao Wei Xiao is right on top of I will dominate. Red Buff is there. Ice Blast helps, but here's a whimsy. The Shadow's up soon. Dominate gonna get slowed down, gonna take even more damage. Xiao Wei Xiao, one oh! hit from the kill. Can he land the shuriken? Dominate jukes it. He's still running away. Four seconds on Xiao Wei Xiao's shadow. There's the whimsy. This is a kill. He was trying to bait the shadow right there through the bush. Yeah. It was a great idea from Dominate to try and juke, but Xiao Wei Xiao holds on to it until he has vision of his target. Well secured kill. And we're back at it again, Freak. These oh fights gosh. do not stop. Chaining into very long and bloody, bloody fights. They start off as a skirmish, turn it into a full five on five. Let's watch the beginnings here as Curse corner their prey. This is the tankiest of tanks, though. Ackerman does go down. He gets his ult proc off, by the way, which will expire when he dies anyway. So he gets a good AoE damage down to soften him up. Everybody leaves X Special. Doesn't get the hook onto Vasily, and Vasily is able to get the execute. This is where Boy Boy makes sure the fight continues. No Name jumps in. Windwall's not enough since he's got Kha'Zix melee hitting him. He's not allowed to leave the party, though. Kot cups him down to size and then gets taken out by Xiao Xiao. Yeah, and awesome. then we see our long chase. Whoa! Progression by Kirk. They're trying to take down Baron 20 minutes in anyway. They've got a blood boiled Boy Boy and, of course, a bunch of consumed damage. Can they kill us? No name down bottom. Half health, no name is far away, but they are stuck in the pit. Here comes Xiao Wei Xiao and Ackerman. This could be a disaster for Curse. Can they do it? Exhaust goes on a Xiao Wei Xiao. He takes a lot of damage. Expessal survives the death part, and that is Baron picked up by I Will Dominate. The battle continues. Can this be the damage for Curse? Hook onto no name. He's going to go down. Xiao Wei Xiao dropped as well. Two for zero, three for zero. Whoa! Curse! Curse! Four makes 
takes it for Ink Special. He wants Vasily, but loses life for it. Maybe a bit too much. That is a very small downer on the end of an epic play from Curse, though. Baron and four kills. Vasily cannot defend this. This might even be an inhibitor turret after this. They should shove this. They've got Blood Boil on Void Boy, Boy as well. Turret going down very, very quickly. Wow. Five seconds left on the LMQ team, though. They don't want to risk it. 30 Two seconds on spot. Dragon. Exactly. Smart choice by Curse. 30 seconds on Dragon. Recall, heal, buy new items, and contest the objective. Dragon timer, I think, is probably the key thing there. Yeah. Prepping up for that one. Look at the littering of wards that they've been able to place down. I really want to see the setup that caused Curse to actually go for this, because this is a very, very bold early Baron here. Since No Name was down bottom, they probably saw him down bottom very early on due to a minion wave. And they committed so heavily to this Baron. What a good call from them. Having the confidence in Nunu does get it. And then the trickle in of LMQ yeah. as Baron is that low. The big one. Yeah, Vasily was... Looks like LMQ came in with Dragon. His replays are going pretty long. LMQ does feel pretty confident on this one. Quas walks back to the top lane. Hook. Shattered. <laughs> And they've got positioning on this mid lane turret, though. Looks like it's going to go down pretty quickly here. Teleport available for Quas. Good damage going across. Windwall is down, though. Good slow in, and the battle continues again. Out goes Curse, though, with a lantern. Now, top is theirs, though. Well, they've got, yeah, they've got plenty of money just standing up here. Pretty much free money sitting on the map right now for Curse. All these outer turrets, they can knock them down in quick succession. Ackermane goes bottom to try and clean up that minion wave. And maybe they'll make a stand at that secondary turret, but those are very difficult Red to defend. Let's see how well they hold it. They will at least make a showing here. Boy Boy is mid as well, so the 4 1 split from Curse right now will it be enough to pressure this turret. Cop does have Trinity Force empowered auto attacks to get down. Dealing some pretty meaningful damage here. Baron buff still on as well. Now here comes Boy Boy. Now, Ackerman does have teleport. He could show up here. It would be so bad, though. Whenever you have your tank with teleport, the first couple seconds of the team fight are so crucial. You need your tank there at the beginning of the team fight. Ackerman does join, but Windwall will secure them another turret. Look at that. Curse move on to a 3,000 gold lead. The Baron buff. They've done a very good job of taking control of the game with this. They're actually up five turrets to zero, by the way. Just never letting their base fall down in the slightest. Now, middle inhibitor turret under fire. The slow comes out for more. Knock of an Akron, not the chase. Smart choice Turret's there. dead. Two hits from dead. Will they go for this one? Akron going to get a giant knock of the battle. Because the special goes down. And they keep chasing. Akron is going to fall. Shao Wei Shao trying to kite out. Not going to be enough. Two for two so far. Double kill for Vasily. Then can he chase down? Whoa! He's triple. He does not get enough, though. It's a double back for Kopp. Three for three on the fight. And Vasily ends his team fight inside of Quas and Kopp right in the middle. Does go down because No Name doesn't commit to the same target. They don't burst down Kopp, and that's going to be three for three even trade when it's all over. Wow. Turret does still stand. Ackerman got right into the middle of them. Four-man knockup from the Lulu ultimate. Set that up very nicely for LMQ. Man, what an interesting game right here. It's kind of... As far as the team fights are concerned, all about the AD carries. 3, 1, and 8 for Cop. A similarly great performance. Vasily, 6, 1, and 4. Honestly, almost identical to his Twitch early game as well. Let's see that one more time. So, Ackerman just walks past the wind wall, gets in the middle, twist will advance, up into the Lulu knockup, followed by Arcane Smash. Shall we shall committed, but got bursted by Boy Boy in the knockup chain. Then they have everyone jump back out. No Name did get a reset, so he possibly could have jumped in for that Quas kill. Or, I mean, that cop kill. But did not pull the trigger. Vasily and the one-man Rambo squad. Yeah, his first death of the game, doing what he could. Does go for cooldown boots, all right. Yeah, just like and tracking makings, uh, probably get a, the later Brutalizer in. At this point, you just last Whisper. I think it's going to be his pickup there. No life steal on his bow. Oh, yeah. Dead. Oh, you, yeah, you have to. The, against this team, look at the yeah. armor we're stacking here. Yeah, yeah. Frozen Heart, Randwitz plus Sunfire already done. Three Ninja Tabbies. Yeah. Even Expecial's going in with the wards now. Let's 
see if Curse can make their push before the Last Whispers start to come in. Stacked up all their armor very nicely right now. Kind of waiting for Xiao Wei Xiao to finish his Last Whisper as well. So far, Exhaust have shut him down pretty cleanly. Another slow for more. Will they go? And Ackerman says yes. He goes on a Void Way. A great knock. But he gets the death mark. Boy is surely going to fall. But he gets the ulti on first. And a triple kill comes in for Curse. They're going to take down more and Vasily as well. They're inside the base in 26 minutes. That is an ace for nothing. And they're going to shove this one all the way to Nexus turrets here. 25 seconds on everybody for LMQ. Curse looking to take game two. Wow. Curse really turn it on here in this game. And it's going to be Quas running from a turret. Vasily gets the credit. But Curse are one game away from being the third North American team to qualify for the 2014 World Championship. Looking strong. Yasuo again for Boy Boy. Big plays off of the mid lane. And Curse grabbed their second game of the match. Can LMQ make their stand and turn this one around? I don't honestly know. You're seeing a mix of happiness and relief on the curse faces. Boy Boy salute in the crowd. I wonder what the pressure's like for them. I mean, curse have been in matches like this before. I remember season two, they went, I want to say it was 2-1 against CLG for the season two world championship trip. And they fell down in the third game. They were that one game away. And They've they always did it. gotten close. Yeah. It would be huge for the team and the entire organization well, to right. get past fourth place. Seriously. <laughs> for once. I mean, they even ended the regular season going 3-1 in Super Week to climb up to fourth place in the seeds here. Knock down CLG. You're up against a heavy favorite. The second seed out of the tournament. LMQ have been in first place practically the entire season. And suddenly cursed 2-0 up. They've got three chances now to make the world championship. And they've been getting better over time. They've improved throughout the season, improved throughout about the this series. Momentum based team here. Curse, yeah. They definitely play on emotion very heavily. Yeah. And so far, they're happy. And I got to think about what LMQ, though, because mm -hmm. in their game five against TSM, they collapsed. They had such a great showing in game one, uh, you know, an interesting sort of middle of the series, but with game five, they were just done. And everyone they, was making gigantic mistakes. They really need to rally right now. This is last chance for LMQ. Yeah. Gonna see if they can do it, man. It's gonna be a very interesting series, even if it is a 3-0. Like, just the fact that if you told me Curse is going to 3-0 LMQ, I wouldn't have probably believed you. There's a chance that they, that they could have, certainly, and they're looking at it right now, but what a road this is if Curse just shows up and dominates here. But for now, we're going to send over the dash to the guys, the analyst has to walk us through that Curse game, too. Thanks, Freak. A pretty dominating win there, at least at the end. We saw Curse pick up a couple solid fights there to take a 2-0 lead over LMQ. And I, they said it yesterday, or they said it at the desk yesterday, if you had said that Curse was going to 3-0 LMQ, I'm not sure I would have believed you. I didn't believe it until I started seeing it happen. Because Curse, they looked completely demoralized yesterday, but then that feature that we saw with Dominate, where he was saying, it didn't get us to get down that much. We just went back, we're like, all right, get level. Know we can win this game. And they're coming out very, very strong today with great showings. And that's great to hear from them, that they do have that mental fortitude in order to come back, you know, brush off yesterday's losses, come back strong. I want to jump right into a replay. We're only going to go six minutes into the game because I think something that emulates that or uh, illustrates that is the fact that Boy Boy has now gotten first-blooded in all five games of the playoffs. But here we have an example of him coming back into lane and still playing aggressive and playing strong. Yeah, his last five, because there was three that they played beforehand. As well. Well, it's the three. Yeah, the, the most the most recent five. Don't worry about it. Anyway, we're going to start rolling this replay out. We're going to see that Xiaoi Xiao, he actually gets chunked out very early on here. And Boy Boy hits six, pushes the advantage, and then No Name comes out of the brush and tries to counter gank this. But Dominate is off on the wings. No Name, he's going to leap. He doesn't have his flash from a previous gank. And they're just going to walk up and turn this completely around on him. And he has no escape available. And Xiao Wei Xiao decides, I have to ulti here. So now he doesn't have that up for the next time he wants to try to chunk down Boy Boy. And they lose all of their lane pressure off of that counter gank. Probably, as a solo laner, when you do get first blooded in a game, what, it, what does it take to come back in the lane and play as aggressively and say, I'm going to get the next one? Well, I do have a lot of experience getting first blood in lane, so at this point it's kind of just like washes over me, like, oh, I'm feeding. This is probably going to be a good game. <laughs> a good uh, game. For, for Voi, he is playing Yasuo, which he's very comfortable on, so when you get that comfort level on a champion, if things go badly, 
you've played solo queue and things that go way worse in solo queue when you play these champions. And so he's had experience like, yeah, at least the enemy doesn't have double buffs right now because I probably had to deal with that before. So I think it's just kind of like going through the motions. He's done this before and it just didn't really affect him. As soon after we saw Void Boy pick up the Ninja Tabbies as well as Dominate and Quas in the top lane, all very early in the game, I feel like that was a really great adaptation by Curse to recognize the team comp that they were playing against and build towards that. Yeah, that was a fantastic adaptation. I actually pointed it out when I saw it. I was like, whoa, very early. Is this first buy on Void Boy? Because he wanted to be able to withstand the damage threats, the physical damage threats, which was all that. LMQ really had. They had a Maokai, but that was about it in terms of magic damage. And you're not going to be chunking down of uh, Yasuo with a Maokai. So I thought it was really good. And it saved him multiple times there. Even the final fight, I think that would have gone completely differently if he didn't have Tabby. Yeah, we saw a couple fights kind of between that point and 20 minutes that went in the favor of LMQ, and things looked pretty good for them. So probably, what were the factors that, you know, kind of d d disallowed them from carrying through? I think a lot of it is LMQ relies on getting these fights where they hope the enemy team isn't ready for it. And you saw that a few times they would get the upper hand in these fights, but Curse kept calling their bluff. The second LMQ would go aggressive, Curse was like, yeah, okay, we'll fight this. When in normal situations, if you're losing and someone's picking a fight, you're like, oh, no, let's, let's salvage this, let's do something else. So I think they're kind of being thrown off with Curse staying aggressive because if they watched yesterday, they would notice Curse kind of played passive yesterday. But now they're back to their regular self. They're not going to play passive and they're going to go hard for this third place spot. And something that seemed to catch LMQ a little off guard was the 20 minute Baron attempt by Curse. So we're going to pull that up onto your screen and probably I want you to walk us through that. I think the biggest thing here is you got to ban Nunu against Curse because this is what they do every game. If you want to roll it right now, they actually start Baron because they know that uh, Vasily isn't there yet. So right now, LMP just has to start a fight because Baron is going down very quickly. I think Zhao Zhao makes a mistake and ults the wrong target, but he also gets exhausted. So at this point, he's a non-factor. And basically, Ackerman's in there tanking damage, but no one's hitting Ackerman. Everyone's just trying to kill the Baron. So right when they kill the Baron, they get that instant buff. They get 40 AP, you know, 20 AD. And at this point, LMQ just needs to cut and run. They lost Baron, and they need to get out. But Curse does an amazing job. Xpecial gets that hook, and they're able to, you know, pick it up on No Name, and they bait Zhao Zhao back in. And at this point, they're just running at them. And there's nowhere to go. How are you going to outrun them? And you have to compliment Curse on the presence of mind to realize that No Name was not there. Yeah. And for the call to finish off the Baron with that consume smite. Yeah, the no name wasn't there, Vasily wasn't there, so it was a three on five. And I, I'm just having replays in my head because LMQ, the last couple of games we've seen them, it has been a Baron that has been their demise. They go up and they walk up to, even against TSM, when Bjergsen was baiting Xiao Wei Xiao off to the side, they keep getting in really bad positions and they've put themselves in them very consciously. I think they just need to take a step back and chill. I was about to say, I was about to drop a stat, which is that over these last two games, there have been 73 kills between the two, or 74 kills, rather, between the two teams, 43 of which are in the hands of Curse. So very bloody games. We are at that point in the series, 2-0. So is it that LMQ just needs to say, hey, I know normally we go for these high kill games and we play hyper aggressively. Let's see what happens if we farm till 20. I don't know. That's not their style. That is really not their style, and they have to play to their strengths, but their shot calling has been off, their morale has been really weird lately. I think a lot of the managerial issues might have been a problem for them, so I have no idea what they can do here. They have to be very resilient, have a lot of tenacity, and just come back and not let those last two losses affect them, because we have seen team kills, reverse team kills happen. I think uh, LMQ's big thing right now is they can't change their play style. They have to stay aggressive, but I think their picks can change. I think Xiao Xiao needs to be on those big farmers, not necessarily the assassins, but get on you know Syndra, Ori, that kind of thing where he really flourishes and bait team fights around that, bait team fights around Ori ult, or bait team fights around a Syndra stun. And I think that would complement them a lot because I know Vasily works really well off of CC, and they're building these comps that are pretty low CC, so I think that'll kind of work with them pretty well. All right, maybe a little change up in the team composition going into game three. We are going to step away for just a moment, but don't touch that browser. Curse are just one game away from securing their first trip to Worlds. We'll see if they can get it done when they face off against LMQ in game three. Stay tuned.
Xiao Wei Xiao dropped as well. Two for zero, three for zero. Yakman is going to fall. Xiao Wei Xiao trying to kite out. Not clean up. Two for two so far. Double kill for Vasily. Then can he chase down Kyle? Whoa! He, he does not get enough. Yeah, yeah. That. Anyway. Right here. We can add. We can add. We can add. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah. Splash the ball. Nice. All right. Let's end. Let's end. Good job. Good job.